Hello and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Millie and today's video is going to be completely different like any of my other content, uh, which is kind of exciting. I will be talking about different lenses specifically for the Canon DSLR EFS mount cameras, but you could also use this information to get an idea on zoom ranges. And I will be also doing a photo equivalent version of this video but it will be coming down later. I didn't want to kind of mush them together. It would be forever long. And I will be throwing a lot of information at you, so I definitely recommend trying not to skip because a lot of the pieces are just very connected and they go together. So if you miss one piece of information, you might later be on like, huh? It's funny to always see other people asking, regardless if it's beauty creators or just anybody, what camera are you using? But truly, it's the lens that we should be asking about. Yes, the camera definitely works, of course. There's different sensor sizes in the camera, so those definitely will affect quality. However, the lens, the glass, really matters a lot as well and the zoom ranges and just everything together it's just kind of like there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle and i think lenses are like the biggest piece pretty much it's something i wanted to mention because i think while it is very important if you're starting out with a youtube channel or if you're established to have great quality however if you're just just starting out there is no reason to be spending any almost any kind of money on buying a dslr camera and a lens and just filming you first definitely need to try it out and see if that's something you want to do do you want to be spending hours editing do you want to film basically you need to first figure out if this is something that you will enjoy doing long term wise before you make the investment something i really want to mention right away in the beginning of this video is that don't buy a very expensive camera if you're not going to learn how to use it so this definitely mostly pertains to dslrs and of course mirrorless cameras as well but the, it's just basically like you're spending a lot of money on something that you're not fully taking advantage of so you're not really getting your money's worth if if that makes sense if that comparison or another comparison would be if you're buying a really really expensive fancy car and you're only really driving realistically every day you know from the supermarket and back like you're not getting your full money's worth of something that is really high high technology and you can really really customize it to get the best quality out of it that you can possibly get so I would definitely not recommend buying and spending a lot of money if you're just gonna use a camera on manual it really is such a shame and yes there will be a quality jump if you're going from a lower or older DSLR to a newer one especially if there's a bigger sensor of course you're gonna see just alone that's going to help the quality but the lens and just the customization and really just knowing how to use the settings is what will get the quality just even higher up and of course you can film in 4k which I am filming in 4k right now but you have to keep in mind that not everybody will be able to watch in 4k because it really depends on the screen that they're watching and if that screen that they're watching on is a 4k screen and so the camera body that i use is the 90d and that is a crop sensor dslr there's also a full frame which is like the mark 5 camera and those have a full sensor in them so this is a crop sensor so, so basically when you're looking at camera lenses and you're looking at the millimeters and the zoom range you have to times it by 1.6 because that's the crop factor so a 50 millimeter lens is technically actually a 80 millimeter lens on the crop sensor and the fact that it's a crop sensor camera is also why it's cheaper because full frame cameras are just so much more expensive you really see mostly just professional videographers and photographers that do it for a job use those cameras brings me to another point just because it's the most expensive doesn't always make it the best when it comes to cameras and lenses because it might be expensive lens but you might actually end up getting it and then not like the zoom range or it might not work with your setup and also i will not be talking about pricing this video because it really just changes from year to year from month to month depends if you buy your lenses as secondhand like I usually do I never buy a brand new lens personally so I'm not gonna talk about pricing that's something you're gonna have to kind of dip your toes into go on Amazon go on eBay go on Best Buy also look out for sales so I will be showing you each lens on and basically how it looks when it's zoomed out when it's zoomed in or if it's a uh, non zoom lens just how it looks like and I will be staying in the same spot so you can really see because you'll see that the aperture of each individual lens really affects the lighting so when you're looking for a lens you're not only looking at the millimeters but you're also looking at the aperture which is the number after f so it's usually f 1.8 f 3.5 etc and the lower the number the basically more light the lens lets in and also the more bokeh effect you get in the background so a lens that has an aperture of 5.6 you will then have to either change your iso in the camera or you will have to fix your lighting like your actual physical lighting if you can you know add more light if you have something that kind of dims in and out then you would have to really crank it up and you will see that in the demo portion and also the other thing to keep in mind is the aperture doesn't stay the same throughout all the zoom ranges and the lenses where it does those 
those lenses are usually very, very expensive. So when you see a range in aperture, so for example, it's a 18 to 55 millimeter and it's f3.5 to f5.6 or something, that means that when you zoom it to 55 millimeters, the aperture will jump to 5.6, which will then darken up the image and you will have to compensate for the lack of light because the lens is more closed, so it's not allowing as much light in. I think kit lenses are perfectly fine to use. They have a really nice range. Some of the newer models just come with an even better kit lens, which is an 18 to 135. So you have an even bigger zoom range than the standard 18 to 55 that some of the older models come with. So next up, let's talk about focusing distance. This is something I learned the hard way. Basically, I got some lenses and I realized that I'm too close to them and they won't focus. And that's because every lens has a different minimum focus range. And what that means is you have to be a certain distance from the lens in order for it to focus. And if you're too close to the lens, it won't focus. And this varies from a lens to lens. And actually the distance is not from the outside of the lens. It's actually a little mark that's on your camera. And I'll show you up here what it is on the 90D, for example. That's actually where the start point is for the minimum focus distance. So next, let's talk about the focus motor on these lenses. Canon has has three different motor options. We have the STM, USM, and DC motor, but all of mine are either STM or USM. STM is a stepping motor. Technically, it's called Canon Stepper Motor Technology, and this offers a virtually silent focusing, so it's really, really great if you are somebody who has the uh, mic on top of the lens or if you're using the internal rec audio recording in the actual camera body. And they do offer some of these lenses in the two different types of motors, so I personally always try to look for the STM. And you're is still great but it's actually geared more for people who use uh, the lens for photography specifically and STM is for people who use the lenses for videos. And these are also sometimes followed by one or two which means that they are an even newer version. So for example out of all the lenses I'm going to be showing you today the 100 millimeter USM lens is absolutely the loudest and you definitely need to have a mic separate from your camera and pretty far away honestly because it is just that noisy. So let's get into the demonstrations of the different lenses and then I'll summarize my recommendations. So I'm starting out with the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter. This one has the lowest aperture at f1.8 and I will put up the rest of my settings up on the screen so you know but as you can see I'm really blown out because the this is the lens that has the biggest opening so it lets that in the most light. So this is at 100 ISO and all the settings are going to remain the same except the aperture obviously because every lens has a different aperture and you will see as I change out the lenses and even as I zoom in the lenses you will see that settings just don't work across all the lenses because of the fact that they all have different apertures. So in this case, what I would do to get it where I want is I would wanna definitely keep it at 100 ISO. So then, because it will only get lighter if I go up from there. So what I would do in this case is definitely just close up the aperture a little bit, go up to 2.8 versus 1.8, which will all depend, of course, on lighting. I could also turn down one of these lights or turn one completely off if I wanted to keep it at 1.8. So let me zoom in out. So I am sitting in the same spot for all of these lenses, and so this is what the 18 to 35 looks like when it's zoomed in. This is as much as it zooms in, which to me is not enough. I could, of course, move closer up to it if I wanted to. I find that this one, this lens kind of distorts my face a little bit the closer I get. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Do you see like how my face, just the way it looks? So I put it up, so this is at 2.8 now. And you can see like it just looks like it's distorting my face so that's why i don't like using this lens to film eye tutorials but it is a really nice lens to have if you want to film further away from your background and you're talking at the camera this is a really beautiful lens because you do get that bouquet thanks to the very low aperture so here is the 50 millimeter f 1.8 stm lens which is called also the nifty 50 this is a really really great affordable lens to have for portraits especially you can see you get a really nice bouquet in the background um, I do have it at f2.8, but it can go all the way down to 1.8, same as the 18 to 35 millimeter. But this one is, off, of course, a bit more affordable. So if I wanted to get the rest of my face in here, I would either have to move the camera further away that way, or I would just have to move myself further away, all the way back here, away from the camera because it is 50 millimeters, so it really crops in. So with all these lenses, they all have different minimum focus ranges, which vary from lens to lens. So this lens, you can get up pretty close if you wanted to, but again, I'm really, really close. I'm probably like less than a foot away. 
and that would be good if you wanted to be that close you you would definitely need some kind of a screen to be able to see and so let's see how close i can get up until it won't focus so about here is when i'm too close and it won't focus so here's kind of a sweet spot so this is the closest you could get to this lens uh, if you wanted to film close-ups and this lens obviously doesn't zoom it's just 50 millimeter so here is the 100 millimeter which at this one it goes down to f2.8 which is what i have it set on and this is at 100 iso and again i'm sitting at the same distance that i was sitting at the other so just so you can see just how zoomed in it is and so let's try it out if i wanted to go all the way further out i would have to go all the way all the way back here and i would have to lower my chair and even then i would have to be i'm probably you can probably hear in the sound i'm pretty far away at this point so this is definitely a good lens but this lens would pretty much just be a one trick pony because you have the 100 millimeter that is set you can't zoom in and so let's see how much closer i can get until it won't zoom anymore so this is pretty much where it is i definitely am further away than i was for the 50 millimeter so here's kind of the minimum distance I am from the lens. The quality is really great. This is such a beautiful lens for close-ups, for macro shots, if that's something you're interested in. This is a really, really great lens. All right, so now we have the beast of a lens, which is the 72 200 millimeter with a low aperture of f2.8. And this, you can see, I'm way too close. I'm same distance as always, and you can see like it's having trouble focusing on my face because I'm too close to the lens. So I would have to go further out so this is kind of as much as I can zoom in so you can see I had to zoom out to here to get it to focus so this is kind of like a nice zoom where you can see how far away you have to be from the lens so this lens is I think great if you have a setup where you have to have the camera pretty far away from you because of the minimum focus range so now this is zoomed in at 200 you can see I'm still a little close I can scoot away so that it focuses if it will focus, will you focus? There we go. This is how much it zooms in at 200 and I'm pretty, I'm not like too far away from the lens, but I'm pretty far. So this would be great to, again, if you had a setup where you had to have the camera pretty far away from you and you wanted to be able to zoom in for tutorials or something like that, but this has quite a bit of a zoom range. This also has really, really great quality. So now we have the kit lens, the 18 to 55 millimeter, which is a 3.5, which is what I have it set it set on right now at 100 ISO. And so you can see it's already darker because the lens is just not as open as the other lenses that were at 2.8 or even 1.8. So this is at 18 millimeters and I'm again sitting at the same distance as for the other lenses too. So now we have zoomed into 55 and you can see that the aperture went up to 5.6 because this lens cannot keep the low aperture throughout the whole zoom range and so the ISO is still at 100 so I would have to basically bump that up if I wanted to zoom in which is not the greatest thing to do or I would have to brighten up the lights to get it to where I wanted to but obviously you can see this is much darker it is nice and zoomed in though so let's just test out how close I have to be what the minimum focusing distance is I feel like about here still at focus actually so right here is kind of i'm actually really close to the lens and it's still focusing it's not the greatest but i would say if you wanted it to be even closer you could just move the lens closer to you so that you could film tutorials got closer if that's what you were looking for but you would definitely have to have another screen so you could see what was going on because if you're looking this way and the screen of the camera is this way you're not going to be able to see if you're in frame but overall, this is a really decent lens to start out with, but you will need a lot of light, especially if you zoom in into 55 millimeters. Next up is one of my personal favorites. I've been filming with this lens for at least two years now. This is definitely my preferred lens. I do love the 100 millimeter if I really wanna get close up in there, but I do really enjoy this one as a lens that can do a couple things. And this is the 18 to 135 millimeter. And this one also has a semi-decent aperture of 3.5 to 5.6 so 5.6 meaning that that's what it's going to be once i zoom in to the 135 millimeters this is an stm lens so the focusing is completely silent you cannot hear it if you were to use the uh audio recording on the, the actual camera body you wouldn't hear any sort of focusing so here we are so here we are at f3.5 and 100 iso so you can see just like the kit lens it's definitely much darker than the other lenses that had the f2.8 
And now I've zoomed into 135. So you can see I'm very, very zoomed in. And the aperture jumped up to 5.6. So I would have to, again, either bump up the ISO or bump up the lighting to get the lighting to where I would want it to be. I think this is a really great zoom range and you can really zoom in and do an eye tutorial, but you could also zoom out a little bit and get that nice kind of more portrait shot for the like intros and outros. So now let's test how close I can get. So usually this is kind of the closest. And then once you start getting in, you can see, so I can get it to here. I can like, I can go to here and it's like starting to get a little blurry. And then I would say this is kind of like a sweet spot. So if you wanted to get even a little bit closer, you could just be up to pretty close to the lens. But I personally usually kind of stick to being this far away. So this lens is the 55 to 250 and this one has a really not great aperture of uh, four and then and then 5.6 at 250 millimeters. So this is again sitting in the same spot. So this would be a good lens if you have a lot of lighting and you have to have the camera a little further away, but you don't wanna quite go and buy the seven to 200 millimeter. So here I am zoomed in and you can see it's not focusing because I am too close to the lens and so I am so I'm not within the minimum focus range so I'm gonna have to actually scoot back let's see how far so here I am at 250 millimeters sitting in the same spot got a really nice zoom into the eyes however the light is not really great again I would have to really bump up the lighting if I could or I would have to bump up the ISO which I don't really want to go anything higher than Personally, 500, even 400, I really don't like going above that, just in terms of quality. But it is really nice. You can see it's like really nicely zoomed in if you wanted some really nice close-up tutorials. And you could, of course, be sitting a little further away from the lens as well. But again, you'd have to make sure that the lighting was enough. So I think this is a decent option if you have a setup where you have to have the camera pretty far away from you. All right, so let's talk about some of my recommendations. You by no means need this many lenses. Let me make that very clear. This is just something I'm really passionate and enthusiastic about. I just love it. I love testing different lenses. I love playing around with my camera. I love taking super close up makeup pictures. So do not feel like, oh my gosh, I need all of these. No, I would say you need one lens or two lenses at most. So first let's talk about the 18 to 55 millimeter. This one I think is a really great kit lens. Uh, I don't really have anything against it except for the fact that the aperture is pretty low which is not ideal but as long as you work on the lighting and even you could just bump up the ISO then you will be perfectly fine. And is this the best uh, glass in here? Probably not. Uh, but again, I feel like the difference is gonna be pretty minuscule for most people unless you're somebody who has an eye for just a quality difference, you know? So I, I think that's a great lens to start out with if you wanted to, if you just wanted to buy a DSLR and just, you know, figure out how to work a DSLR first definitely think this is just a great option to have. So the next step up would definitely be a 50 millimeter, AKA an 80 millimeter on a crop sensor DSLR camera. And I think this one has really beautiful, beautiful quality. I would say definitely a step up from the other one. Also, this one is really great because you have the F1.8 and you have, if you get the STM version, you have virtually silent autofocus, which is something really nice to have. And this one also, you can get really close up to it if you really wanted to do a close up, which would be nice. But like I mentioned, you would definitely need another screen to tether to the camera so that you could see what you're doing because you'll be so close. You will be most likely blocking your view from the viewfinder. So you would want another screen to make sure that you're in frame, but this is a really, really great lens. You can get some really beautiful bokeh. And of course this lens lets in quite a bit of light, which is a huge plus. So also it will depend on your setup can you have the camera closer to your face or do you have to have it propped up on a tripod really far away from you i think that will also depend on just if you're able to utilize this in two ways you know sitting closer to it sitting further away from it so the next one is the 18 to 135 this one is my ride or die i love this lens this one uh of course again not the best aperture however it has a really great zoom range you have to times it by 1.6 of course i have the stm version and the new kit lenses for some of the 90d and 80d i believe the 18 to 135 comes with, I believe it's like USM2 motor or something. So I don't really know if there will be much of like a 
quality difference between that one or this one, but also you can get this one for a great price. I feel like this lens is very versatile. This one is especially great if you have a setup where you're further away from the camera and you can't really be closer if you don't have like a tripod you can set up on your desk if you don't have room on your desk. This is just a great option overall, but I do feel like the zoom range really only matters if you're specifically trying to film tutorials, for example. So like the 50 millimeter would be a great general lens to have if you're not trying to do any sort of tutorial and zoom in or anything like that. Next, let's talk about the 50 to 250 millimeter. This one also not the greatest aperture, I gotta say, but you can get this lens for really, really, really cheap. So I would say if you didn't want to get this and you wanted a bigger zoom range, I would get this one and just only get a body of the camera and skip on the kit lens and buy this one because I got this one for like $90, okay? That's really, really cheap, probably because it doesn't have the best glass and also the aperture is really, really high, which is not great. So you will definitely have to compensate with more lighting on the outside of the camera as well as probably bumping up your ISO. So the next 100 millimeter, this one really is just very specific lens to own if you wanna do macro photography, if you wanna do some serious close-up action. This is the lens. I don't think that just anybody needs this. I really feel like some of the other lenses that I've talked about are definitely better options but if you just really really love macro photography you'll love getting really really close to the face doing some really beautiful editorial style shots then this one is a very beautiful and very crisp lens so then lastly let's talk about this really heavy lens this is the 70 to 200 millimeter lens and this one is an L and it's IS to USM so this one it's really really heavy you definitely don't want to be putting this on any kind of like super super light camera body or a wonky tripod pod because it will definitely fall over. This lens I would say is really mostly great for people who are really far away from their cameras and really want to be able to zoom in. And of course the 2.8 aperture on this is really great and it has the L glass so it's just really really crisp photos, crisp videos with this lens. But again, but is it the most necessary lens for you to have? I would say not. Maybe if you're like really trying to upgrade the way that you have your camera set up, it's really far away from you and you really do want to be able to zoom in, then this is a great option. But I would definitely recommend some of these other lenses over this one. I would not recommend it if you're just starting out and doing videos or taking photos for Instagram or something like that. Definitely don't think it's necessary. I would say if you're like really, really, really into quality and you just really want to upgrade, if you've been on YouTube for a long time and you really want to upgrade, then I would say go for it. But otherwise, I would definitely say choose some of these other ones over this one. But again, it really depends on what you're looking for, what is your setup, and what kind of content you will be creating. I really hope this video was helpful. I really try to make it easy to understand. I am a very visual person, and every time I want to learn about something new, I always tend to go look for videos specifically or just things that are visual. It just really helps me understand, which is why I wanted to give you this visual of the lenses and being close to it, being further away from it, zooming in and zooming out, so that you would just get an idea of how all the stuff works. I will be also doing a photo version of this video. So I'll be putting on all the lenses separately and I will be showing you how the pictures come out with the different lenses, the different settings, having to change the settings, etc. I will also be doing a video on how I take my photos and how I edit my photos. So if you do this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.